This is the fourth video on this year's back to school series, so be sure to check the other three when you finish this one. The first thing you should do this year is regain your habits back. Restructuring your day again and getting your workflow going will do wonders for you right now. Trying to regain your habits while you're getting accustomed to new schedules and routines is kinda overwhelming. So making sure that your time management foundations are set will make it easier to incorporate new things into your routine once the new semester kicks in. Think about consolidating your fitness routine, solid sleeping habits, a cleaning routine, and a good meal prep plan before you start the new semester. Secondly, you should set your knowledge base. A knowledge base, like we discussed last week, is a repository of information where you store and index notes, projects, and other data. While you can create a knowledge base in an analog format, it's definitely recommended that you use an app to do this. Using an app for knowledge base allows you to access your information anywhere, type faster and reorganize things with a click, as well as sharing data easily and reducing your environmental footprint. There are some apps that have the required features to set a knowledge base. My favorite, of course, is Notion, but you can also try out Evernote, which is a classic, the new Rome research app, Coda, OneNote or Slides. Next, you should be thinking about putting together a time management plan. A time management plan should tap into your daily routine, your monthly or yearly advance, and the weekly schedule. Although there's some info you can't anticipate yet, like a fully detailed schedule or some assignment due dates, you can definitely start by drafting your system, by filling your calendar with known appointments, events, breaks and holidays, and start envisioning a balanced weekly and daily routine that is packed with productive focused time slots, but also with enough time to cater to your own personal needs. And speaking of routines, this is the time to start practicing your morning and bedtime routines, especially if you're someone who has a natural tendency to prefer routines that are not tailored to your future schedule in college. Start by setting alarms that gradually guide you to optimal bedtime and waking up hours, and start developing new simple habits that can put you in the right mood to start and end your day on a positive note. You can consider delving into a new personal project, more about that on the last point, that will make you feel motivated to wake up in the morning. You can also brainstorm small habits that you would enjoy transporting over to your evening routine that will help you wind down and slowly get you into the mood to close the day and prepare for the following morning. I love to set up the ideal playlist whenever I'm transitioning between different phases or routines. And this one is pretty self-explanatory. Just build a playlist that manifests the type of mood and rhythm you want to mimic during the semester. This is also a great time to declutter and minimize supplies, apps and tech. Without going into too much detail about how you should do this, because, well, there's people way more qualified than me to talk about minimalism and decluttering, look through your supplies and ask yourself, do I need this now? Is there a good chance I will need this this semester? And do I like this enough to keep it despite not needing it? And then, whenever you feel like you would like to declutter something, consider donating it to someone who needs it before throwing it in the trash. Taking into account what's left, focus on maximizing the use of each tool instead of collecting multiples. For instance, instead of taking an iPad, computer and paper supplies to class because you think they're all necessary, consider the possibility of turning one of these into an all-in-one power machine that will serve as the main tool for most of your work. Same thing with stationery. You actually don't need 10 colored pens, multiple writing tools, paper of different types and multiple binders. Most of these are distractions and they will not help you. Simplify your stuff so you make space and time for more relevant things. You should also focus on creating a study space that reduces distractions. If you lack the space, your study area doesn't have to be somewhere static, in a dedicated office or a corner of your room. 
In my case, my desk is my dining room table, so I have to set up everything anytime I have to do some work. Drastically minimizing the amount of gadgets and supplies I use worked great for this. Some other things I make sure to set up properly are outlets and cables, the lighting and music. I also set up the table so I'm facing a window with low or almost no movement outside and away from my TV screen. Also, try to cut back on overstimulation and live a slower life. You don't need to be running all the time to be productive. You can accomplish so much by purging your routine of non-important things, finding meaning and mindfulness in your day-to-day -day life, and do things with intention. Cut back on unnecessary overstimulation that causes you stress and enjoy the process. Although this doesn't seem like a good way to prepare for college, believe me that cultivating this kind of mindset before you jump into the madness will do wonders for you this year. You can also use this time to start drafting your outlines and create a master list of textbooks you'll need for the semester. It's never too soon to start preparing and getting into the studying mindset, even if you take only 30 minutes per day doing this. Take a look at your class syllabus if you have one, or start looking at the class description and search for those topics on the web and see what you find out. Finally, start a new hobby or learn a new skill. This may sound counterproductive, but if you think, it's actually a great idea to learn something new during this prep phase before you're actually forced to learn whatever you'll be learning in college. Take this time to subscribe to a website where you can take online classes on something fun that you really enjoy, like Skillshare or Coursera, or a language learning website like italki, Babbel and Duolingo, and get yourself out there and make the most out of this valuable time. This will also help you enter into a productive mindset and start establishing good habits that you can then carry over into your next semester. Also, feel free to take this prep time to sit back and enjoy binge-watching some series before your schedule is packed to the brim with classes. And why not trying something new, like today's sponsor, Acorn TV, which has an extensive library dedicated to British television, full of classics and newly discovered favorites. With Acorn TV, you get access to thousands of hours of premium, commercial-free, international content for $5.99 per month. And if you're afraid you're going to run out of content, don't worry because they add new releases every Monday, so there's always something new to watch. It also works seamlessly with all of your devices, so you can watch your favorite shows on your iPad or iPhone, Android devices, and then cast it to your TV using Google Chromecast, Amazon Fire TV, and more. I love playing a series on my iPad and carry it with me around the house while I'm cooking or doing laundry. If you're a fan of British comedy, then you need to watch The Other One. It follows two sisters from very different worlds who had no idea the other existed until their father dies and it's such a great show and I'm loving it so far. If you want to watch all of these shows and escape to Britain, Ireland and Australia without leaving your seats, try Acorn TV for free for 30 days by going to acorn.tv and use code MARIANA. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll see you next week. Bye guys!